it's Jessie V. You probably saw the title and the thumbnail of this video and thought, really Jessie? The Kool-Aid Man? I know, I know, it sounds really weird, okay guys? But today we're gonna be talking about some really creepy brand and product mascots. Some of these characters that were meant to be fun and uplifting actually scared a lot of people for years and years. So we're gonna be getting into some creepy facts and just general history about some of these very strange mascots. And as you can imagine, yes, we are starting with the Kool-Aid Man. <laughs> And I actually do have a question for you to comment down below. Do you find him creepy? Because I definitely did as a kid. Before I get started, just another reminder about the Christmas mystery boxes. Each box is going to be filled completely differently with cool new things that you've never seen before. They're just so magical and awesome and I cannot wait for you guys to see what is inside. So those are linked down below. Okay, so let's start with the Kool-Aid man. We're gonna start with the history and then talk about why people find him so scary. Before he was even called the Kool-Aid man, he started off by being called the Pitcher Man, which sounds like a creature from like a horror movie or something. The Pitcher Man was created in 1954 by Marvin Plotz. Working from his Chicago home on a cold day, Plotz watched his young son trace a smiley face on a frosted window pane. So so he literally just saw a smiley face put onto a window and thought, hey, I gotta create a character for Kool-Aid. This inspired Marvin to create a beaming glass pitcher filled with a colorful drink that had the face of a man. And from there on, the joyful pitcher was on all the Kool-Aid's advertisements. And then in 1975, he went from being the pitcher man to the Kool-Aid man. And he was actually a character played by a real man who was just dressed up in a car. Costume. So he was in the body of a pitcher and his arms and legs would just stick out. <laughs> he also became more of an action figure in commercials performing extreme sports and busting through brick walls. As you guys probably know, the Kool-Aid man is known for shouting, Oh yeah! As he is summoned by thirsty children with the phrase, Hey Kool-Aid! So this was basically what the Kool-Aid commercials were comprised of. Just a Kool-Aid man literally breaking through a wall of a house. And then some time in the 1990s they stopped using like a real life person in a costume to be the Kool-Aid man and he just became computer generated kind of like what you're familiar with now. So I don't think the computer generated version is like that freaky. I more think it's the man in a legit costume that's freaky. Ever since the Kool-Aid man was created kids everywhere have felt like it had a creepy vibe. Some go as far as saying they are afraid of the Kool-Aid man. I mean think about it nobody wants a giant pitch are breaking through their house. There's even fan art all over the internet turning the Kool-Aid man into something darker like a monster. So you can find a bunch of like creepypasta art of the Kool-Aid man so I feel like a lot of people are in the same boat thinking he's a little, a little strange. But definitely let me know what you guys think. But we're gonna move on and talk about other brand mascots that weren't so friendly looking. Let's talk about the retro Ronald McDonald. I have talked about McDonald's on this channel so many times before but I don't I don't think I've ever really talked about the retro Ronald McDonald. And actually, before Ronald was even a thing, McDonald's had a mascot that not a lot of people remember. Their very first mascot was named Speedy, but they felt like he wasn't enough, so they created the famous clown. Retro Ronald McDonald was first seen in 1963. The character magically pulled hamburgers out of his belt while wearing a nose made out of a McDonald's cup. His hat was tray holding a styrofoam burger, a bag of fries, and a milkshake. Listen guys, looking back at these retro images, I am so glad they updated his look because he doesn't look like that anymore, but I mean, he's still a little bit scary. I've always wondered why they decided to go with a clown for their mascot, but I mean, you do you, McDonald's. There's actually another mascot that belonged to McDonald's that a lot of people forgot about. His name was Mac Tonight, and he was a moon man. <laughs> this sounds like I'm making this all up, but it's real. Mac Tonight is a fictional character used in the marketing for McDonald's restaurants during the mid-1980s. He is known for his crescent moon head, his sunglasses, and piano playing. He basically sings a song that was designed to appeal to baby boomers because they wanted to revive like the 1950s style of music, so they thought they would attract all these people 
to McDonald's just by the vibe of this moon man. <laughs> but I think it freaked people out more than it enticed them, so they got rid of it pretty quickly. And I think there was also like a lawsuit or something that happened and they had to get, they couldn't continue. Next we have the Jack in the Box mascot. Now I'm from Canada, we don't have Jack in the Box, so I actually didn't know this was even a thing. I've heard of the restaurant, but I've never seen their mascot until I was doing research for this video. What is this? Guys, this is terrifying. Now let's go back into the history because it gets a little bit weird. Before he became a walking mascot that you all know, he was first simply a clown stuck on the roof of the restaurant to grab the attention of passing motorists. So I guess they literally tried to make Jack in the Box a Jack in the Box. But the clown was a little bit too uh, dark and spooky looking for a lot of people. It says, by the late 1970s, the Jack in the Box executives began to feel that the clown mascot was a little too childish. I would say it's more scary than childish, but okay. So in 1980, they decided to get rid of that clown on the top of their restaurant. Around the time they got rid of that clown, they got into one of the biggest food scandals of all time. This happened in 1933, there was a giant E. coli outbreak in their restaurants. There was improperly cooked burgers. So many people were hospitalized. I think four people even died. But it says hundreds of customers went to the hospital over this outbreak. They obviously fixed the problem, but to get people's minds off of their giant scandal, they decided to make a new mascot that would kind of distract people from the problems that they caused. So they revamped the clown mascot and turned him into a no-nonsense, smart talking executive. So he's supposed to look like a man with like a looks like a snowman on his head to be honest. But apparently that is now their mascot. I find it very strange and kind of creepy but I mean like I said before you do you. <laughs> okay let's move on to the Twizzlers mouth. Their mascot was literally a mouth. Kind of reminds me of Dairy Queen but I believe this mascot was before Dairy Queen. Twizzlers had a creepy mouth as their trademark. It was just a disembodied smile that was just talk in commercials with giant teeth. <laughs> it says, in this ad, the mouth laughs and snacks on Twizzlers while circus music plays in the background. Did they really think this would be effective? It sounds really scary. Sometimes I wonder like what brands think when they come up with stuff like this. I mean, was it effective? I don't know. I'm guessing this was back in like the 1980s maybe? I'd have to ask my parents, I guess. <laughs> Next, let's move on to the Domino's Pizza Noid. Now, I just have to say, I'm a huge fan of Domino's. Like, not sponsored, but like Domino's. If you wanna sponsor me, I will eat pizza on video. And I never knew they had a mascot. I don't know if it's because they don't really use it anymore, but this is like news to me, you know? The poor little Noid is a long-eared, buck-toothed space creature in a red jumpsuit. His goal is to eat pizza but he can never quite get to it. So this character is just constantly trying to get a piece of Domino's pizza, but just can't. And a lot of the time he ends up getting squashed by a flat piece of space putty, whatever that means. But he always gets like injured while trying to get pizza, which is a very strange marketing strategy. He was a character created in the 1980s and there was actually supposed to be a cartoon series based around his character. It was going to be on CBC, but it was actually actually canceled because a lot of people were complaining that it would just be like a huge advertisement instead of an actual interesting kid show. But a computer game was released in 1989 called Avoid the Noid. The object of the game is to deliver a pizza within a half hour time limit in an apartment building swarming with noids. So yeah, I just find it so bizarre. Like, do, do they even use this mascot anymore? I want to know. The next one we'll talk about is Chuck E. Cheese, which is such an obvious one. I've talked about Chuck E. Cheese on on this channel before. Now, what a lot of people don't know is when the first location opened in 1977, these animatronic figures weren't on a stage like we're all used to. They were actually inside framed portraits on the wall. I guess they were supposed to be like moving paintings or something. Obviously that is no longer used. I think they just put the animatronics like on a stage or do like live performances. I still think he's a very strange mascot. I know they have updated his look a little bit and it has 
has kind of helped, but like my goodness, what are you guys thinking? Next we have Big Mix, which I've never seen before, but apparently it was a thing. Big Mix was a cereal in the 1990s that combined a bunch of different cereals into one box. So it was something that people hadn't really seen before and they were excited about it. Kellogg's decided to create a mascot to match the products being pieced together. So they created like a Frankenstein monster as their mascot. The finished product was part chicken, part wolf, part moose, part pig, and all confusing. So people were like, what the heck is that? That's kind of weird. And to end this video, we have lemon heads. This is a candy that I have never tried before, but let me tell you their mascot is nightmare inducing. It's basically this lemon head boy. It's like a boy with a lemon as his head. And like, he looks terrifying. His eyes are huge. He's always smiling. He just walks around in the commercials. Why is this actually a thing? I don't know if they're using like shock value to try and like get customers in or what their whole marketing scheme is here. But I don't know if this makes me want to try the candy. Like, does it? I'm actually being brainwashed right now. Anyways, though, guys, those are all of the creepy mascots that I could think of. If I'm missing any really good ones, definitely comment them down below. And don't forget, if you would like your Christmas mystery box, the link is down below in the description. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!